Hey everyone, this is Mr. McKinney with your one through 10 on forces and motion. We're gonna look at how those terms are related and what they are. We're actually gonna use a tennis ball to start us off here. So I think most people would agree that when, when I push this tennis ball, it's in motion. In science, we define motion as an object's change in position over time. So if this tennis ball is changing its position over time, we can safely say that it's in motion, okay? The more important and more interesting fact is how do we get objects in motion? Um, I've been trying to use my mind force on it, if you could help me out, but I need a little more practice with that. Um, so we're just gonna have to use the traditional physics uh, term for force, which is simply a push or a pull on an object. So I'm gonna say that one more time because the term force shows up everywhere in physics. Uh, you actually can't have motion without a force. So a force is a push or a pull on an object. Now, even if, so say I'm going to let go of this tennis ball. If it starts to change position over time, which it does, we know that even if we can't see the force, the force must be there. So in this case, in the, the tennis ball falls and starts motion due to a force that we call gravity. It's a downward pull force. In the next video, I'll talk about um, that pull force, which is known as gravity, and how we measure force, which is a term called Newtons. But before I get out of here, I'm going to attempt to juggle these for you. Um, I want you to notice a couple of things. The upward force that it takes um, to get it up in the air, the push force, and then the pull force that gravity um, acts on the object. I'd also like you to try to keep track of how many tennis balls are in the, in the air at one given time. All right, so here we go. Cue the music and physics in action. Until next time, uh, stay strong and science on.